Cobra Commander is hated an evil personified corrupt. A man without scruples, probably the most dangerous man alive. Today we're going to take a mad journey through time and follow Cobra Commander's path through comic books, movies, animated features, and a beloved toy line. Before we begin to let me thank you for watching JLS Comics and pressing play. If you like videos like this, don't forget there's a like button and if you want to subscribe as well, I would appreciate it. I help with new comic book movie superhero content every week along with a weekly live show every Thursday. So with that other way, let's jump into our Cobra Commander story. Also, take a shot every time I say Cobra Commander in this video for you uh, adults. Cobra Commander is a title of the Supreme Leader of the Cobra Criminal Organization. One is selected every seven years in an occult ceremony and the electee dons the infamous helmet and mask to become Cobra Commander. However, it wasn't always like this. In the original Hasbro run, the famed 1980s TV show, Cobra Commander was just one guy. If you just know Cobra Commander from the animated TV show, you don't fully know Cobra Commander. You would think there isn't much to say about him. He is by design mysterious and elusive. You wouldn't think there's much to know about him, but surprisingly there's hundreds of issues through multiple volumes of comic books, movies and such that by the time we get to the IDW comic book run, his story is fleshed out much more and the idea that Cobra Commander is a mantle, a moniker for an elected position is explored fully. As was the case with Snake Eyes and his story, the specifics of that changed and evolved depending on the author and the platform. So this combines stories into one chronology as best we know it. Okay, let's start with the first by publication, Cobra Commander, the solo man who debuted in 1984's G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Larry Hama, creator of G.I. Joe and Cobra and Cobra Commander, say Cobra Commander's design was inspired by William F. Buckley, a political conservative who famously debated with Gore Vidal back in 1968. Cobra Commander likes to yell and fight with his command staff like Zartan and Destro. While their enemy is G.I. Joe, arguably his greatest enemy is himself. We learn that Cobra Commander started out as a used car salesman. The story goes that his family died so he descended into madness, creating an organization with the goal of revenge. But it's truly a much darker story than that. You see, Cobra Commander had a brother named Dan and Dan fought for the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. Upon return to the United States and with lack of psychosocial services to treat PTSD and such, Dan turned to alcohol. Dan was driving one day, inebriated, and suffered a horrible car wreck where nearly everyone was killed. It's a story that intertwines and parallels the story of Snake Eyes, which you can learn about in a video I have in my History and Origin playlist, but essentially it was Snake Eyes' family that was the other car, and they died as well. Cobra Commander took a special interest in the boy whose life was spared when no one else's was. Cobra Commander tracked the boy to Japan where he learned that the boy was training to be a ninja in the Rishikage clan, so Cobra Commander hired a mercenary named Firefly to kill him. But let's talk about Billy Kessler. His wife found out that he had hired an assassin to kill a boy in Japan, so she left with Billy and traveled across America, building his following of fanatics that would ultimately become the foundation for Cobra. He eventually settled in a town called Springfield, a town with no clearly designed state, just like the Springfield The Simpsons live in, by the way, and this became the place where Cobra was officially established. The town had fallen on hard times, blaming the government, and so they were easy prey and susceptible to persuasion and propaganda. So Cobra took this opportunity to build Cobra out of a pyramid scheme idea he had. This is where Arbco was founded as well, famous for their toxins and poisons and household cleaners. In G.I. Joe issue 58, Cobra left the organization to care for Billy as he was injured and in a coma. Fred Seven, a clone from the Crimson Guard, helped to repair Billy as he was a master of cybernetic technology. Fred was loyal to the Cobra organization, and when he heard that Cobra Commander was leaving, he shot him, presumably killing him. That was issue 61. The Fred Seven clone took over as Cobra Commander until the original, Thought Dead, was able to heal and return by issue 100 and reclaim his title. The Cobra Commander's structure consisted of a Cobra Commander, Destro, Zartan, sometimes the Baroness, sometimes the Rana, and then of course Serpentor for a while, the lab-grown super soldier made by Dr. Mindbender. In issue 55, Cobra Commander actually took off his helmet and donned a fake Miami Vice style disguise. <laughs> Based on this, it's hard to say what he really looks like because it was a disguise. Even without his helmet, yeah, you can see here, he's still wearing his mask. In the G.I. Joe 12-inch line, he is depicted with dark, slick-backed hair. In the animated G.I. Joe the movie, Cobra Commander's history had a complete makeover. Now he hails from a secret society called Cobra Law, and it was a horrible accident that drove him to forever wear that helmeted mask. It was this ancient serpent race that predated Homo sapiens. When the humans became dominant on Earth, this race of beings was forced underground and to their secret base called Cobra La. I suppose it's a take on Shangri-La. The ancient snake race dispatched Cobra Commander to the surface to wreak havoc upon the Earth and to bring down the downfall of humanity so that their serpent 
secret society could once again rise to the surface. We can say this is explained as it is later on that the title is a moniker worn by many a person, but spoilers, at the end of the movie, Cobra Commander dies. Marvel wanted the comic book continuity to be consistent and so they had Larry Hama, despite what he wanted, kill off Cobra Commander in the story I mentioned a moment ago. So that makes sense now. IDW's first Cobra Commander was a successful businessman, but his identity was kept a closely guarded secret. I guess you'd need a good businessman to run Arbco and extensive enterprises, front companies for Cobra, but a good businessman does not make a good terrorist organization leader. This first Cobra commander was elected by the Cobra Council for five terms but was ultimately assassinated. A new Cobra commander was elected named Crake and he was a ruthless bloodthirsty version. IDW brought the story of Cobra all the way back to the 14th century where a Cobra commander ordered the death of Dante Alighieri because he learned he was working on his famed work The Divine Comedy. According to the story Dante was part of the secret society of Cobra. Ancient Yakuza were tied to the Cobra as well during the 18th century and pirates like Captain Shelley and other historical figures like Thomas Laurel and Charles Pike. While we won't get into centuries of history here you can see that IDW has established Cobra as an ancient secret society that existed through the French Revolution, through the bubonic plague that swept through Europe in the same century as the plot against Dante. While explored in story, the cover to IDW's G.I. Joe Volume 3 number 12 depicts Cobra commanders that have spanned centuries before that. The samurai version is another one wearing the Lorica Squamata, which was the type of armor worn by Roman soldiers in the classic BC era. So there was a G.I. Joe covert deep operative with the call sign Shuckles. Shuckles infiltrated Cobra after a conflict with Zaymont and Tomax, but that conflict with Shuckles prompted them to stage a coup against Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander had put trust in his new agent Shuckles, whom he had ordered to his side to stand against Zaymont and Tomax. Except this is just what Shuckles wanted, and he shot Cobra Commander right through the head. Baroness and Tomax managed to escape with Cobra Commander's body before Shuckles blew up the entire island with an underground Cobra nuclear blast. And this is when the Cobra Council elected Craig as the new Cobra commander. The British version of G.I. Joe is called Action Force and features the arch enemy terrorist group Red Shadows. Red Shadows was ruled by Baron Ironblood. When Baron Ironblood resurrected Red Shadow into Cobra, he also became a Cobra commander. In 2009, the first live action depiction of Cobra commander played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt was released. However, for much of the film, he's simply referred to as the Doctor. He didn't become Cobra commander until much later. And in the crossover with the Transformers, yes, that did happen, Old Snake was a pastiche of of Cobra Commander. Hasbro partnered with Marvel Comics to create backstories to help sell their new 3.75 inch action figure line. Spurred on by the success of Kenner's Star Wars figures, Hasbro wanted a new toy line all of their own. Marvel editor Archie Goodwin put Larry Hama on the job when lots of other creators in the bullpen said, no thanks. When Larry Hama first presented his designs and concept, which was a repackaged idea he had for a Nick Fury story to Archie Goodwin, his response was, hey Larry, to sell this, we need a villain for these Joes to fight. Thus was born. The Cobras. As far as action figures go, Cobra Commander was only available for a while as a mail away offer. Kids needed to collect proofs of purchase to mail them in, what the line called flag points. You actually would um, send that in with a check for 50 cents to cover the shipping, and your free Cobra Commander would show up in the mail a little while later. This mail in was the last of the line that lacked elbow articulation. In 1982, there was a Sears exclusive playset and a missile command headquarters that included Cobra Commander figures. From then on until the line's demise in the mid 90s, Cobra Commander was a male and exclusive figure. So now you know all about Cobra Commander, and as they say, knowing is half the battle. <laughs> Thanks for watching and listening, my friends. If you're here and haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button. Join this rapidly growing JLS Comics family. I'll be one of the first to know when we upload content each week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.